just serve out of blind devotion to the Labour Party. I served because I thought we needed a bit of that. That the scale of problems we faced in Britain needed big solutions. But frankly, we needed a bit more socialism in the Labour Party. That's what I felt. And I thought it was right. about the need to listen to the members more. I mean, let's be blunt, if the Labour Party in Westminster had listened a bit more to our councillors and our members across this country over the last 30 years, we'd have been building council houses. Yeah, okay. There was a constant refrain. We need more social housing in our area. It's driving up the prices. It's causing problems for our youngsters. People can't get on the ladder. Let us borrow to do it. Why weren't we listening? Jeremy was right about that. But where's he been for the last 11 months? What's he been doing? As I sat in that shadow cabinet room with him, day and daily, he keeps talking about the tax credits victory and the PIP victory. Well, I'll tell you what, I wouldn't vote for those. <laughs> with what Jeremy would call austerity. Like, it was weak, it wasn't strong enough. We should have been saying clearly what we were going to do to rebuild our economy. But he's not said that in the last 11 months. It's fine to be anti-austerity. What's he in favor of? What's he pro? I'm very clear, I'm pro-prosperity. I want everybody in Flantris, and everybody in South Wales, and everybody in every corner of this country to be prosperous. I want material wealth. I want everybody to be able to have a decent job that pays enough for them to look after their family and buy a house and buy a car and go on a holiday. Basic things. How have we in 20 years moved from a situation where that was the norm, the expectation that my generation would have, to one where I look at my 17-year-old son and I think, I don't know how you'll be able to afford to buy a house. What's happened? I drove past the first house me and Liz bought in London just a week or so ago. I couldn't afford to buy that house now. 25 years later, I couldn't buy that house. I'm now an MP. If I became the Prime Minister, I still couldn't afford to buy that house. <laughs> you know, something has gone fundamentally <coughs> deeply wrong in our communities and in our economy. And we've got to change it. So I've said, let's be clear. Let's say we want a massive investment program in this country. Let's say we want what I call a British New Deal. We should be borrowing a Keynesian borrowing program. 200 billion pounds is what we should be borrowing to invest in the FE colleges, the schools, the skills, the hospitals, the housing that we need across country. Let's liberate our councils to borrow once more. Let's get on with building 200,000, 300,000 houses here as Bevan urged us to do 60 years ago. Let's get on with changing our taxation system. Why on earth have we got a system right now where corporation tax in this country is soon to be half that of America? Half that of the most capitalist country in the world. Does anybody here think that is morally justifiable or economically sustainable? Now if they pointed to me and said, well hang on, it's resulted in lots of new investment into this country, I pause. But the truth is it hasn't. You know, if they were able to point to the fact that allowing the 1% to fly away from the middle classes and working classes in this country, as they have done over the last decade, had led to everybody's income rising, then I think maybe they were right. But it hasn't. So why aren't we doing what I'm suggesting and introducing a wealth tax in this country? 15% charge. Only on the earnings of those people earning over £150,000 a year, Millionaires, most of them in this country, and then only on the extra earnings they get from dividends, shares, extra property that they own and rent out. We had that sort of a tax in this country. Many other European countries still have that sort of a tax. Thatcher got rid of it. I would bring it back. I use it to fund NHS and social care. I thought. <laughs> 